All right, we are joined by UCLA student athletes Gina Conti and Charisma Osborne um, and head coach Corey Close. Uh, we'll invite Corey to start out with an opening statement and then open it up to you all for questions. Hello, everybody. It's so good to see you all again. It's been far too long and just appreciate everything that you all do. This is uh, so important for our conference, for the young women that represent us so well. And uh, just really appreciate you all being here. And it's just great to see you. And thank you for the coverage of our great sport. Uh, really excited about our team this year, uh, but I'll tell you, it's a lot of unknowns. Every day is a new discovery. We have literally nine new players on our roster that were not on our roster last year, so it's definitely a different uh, looking and feeling team, but really like the pieces. Um, but our challenge is going to be to have them come together to really become a team without the like long-term reps of having years with each other. Um, but we have plenty of talent, great personalities, and really committed to playing at a championship level. Cheryl Coward, HoopFeet.com. We cannot let you uh, leave without asking you about the Rookie of the Year in the WNBA and what that means for your program and your thoughts on that. Well, I think it's not only what, means, what it means for our program, but for this conference, right? That, we're, that this conference prepares people for the pros. And I think it's important to always think about it in sort of a bigger terms than just ourselves. But also, we're very proud of Michaela Anyanwede and being Rookie of the Year in the WNBA. Uh, you know, that credit goes to her. She had big dreams, but she even had bigger work ethic. And she always did it within the context of making her team and her program better. It was never about Michaela. It was always about the people around her and how she could make them shine. And so it's so great when that comes back to her having this kind of moment and well-earned and we couldn't be happier for her. Gina, why UCLA? Yeah. Um, can you guys hear me? Okay, so for many reasons why UCLA, but um, once I put my name in the transfer portal and just talked with the coaching staff and just heard their vision and how they invest in, you know, me as a player and as a person, um, really just stood out to me. And then with seeing the players and seeing their culture and their chemistry that they had and with the history that the UCLA has had as well, um, making to the Sweet 16 and the Elite Eight, um, I wanted to be a part of something special. And then Charisma, uh, reading about a practice that Corey said, you guys aren't getting it done today and we're done for the day. Uh, I'm wondering kind of what the discussion was with the team. I know that you continued on with your own practice. I just want to know how that felt, you being one of the leaders of the team and what that conversation was, please. Yeah, we continued on with the practice afterwards. But I think um, not even just me, the rest of our leadership group, uh, we really met and got together and was trying to figure out like what's going on with the team and what we need to do better so that we're not having dips and ups and downs in practice. Um, and I think recently we've been trying to bounce back and trying to figure it out. And like Coach Corey said, we have a lot of new players, so it's a lot different than last year. But I think we're, we're coming along and we're going to get it together. Well, let's make no mistake about it. When we were flying up here yesterday, Charisma told me, you were mean and angry today. So, she was. She you know, was. But so there you go. <laughs> She's just trying to make us better. So. <laughs> Kevin Dana with Pac-12 Networks. Uh, Coach, uh, I have a question for both, but first for Coach, what was it like coaching last year when at times you only had seven players available and to still get to the second round of the NCAA tournament despite having kind of thin numbers and to now this year where you have a lot more bodies available and, and high-level uh, players who, who could be rotation pieces for you? Well, I think it is interesting. I might have to learn how to sub again. I didn't even know how to sub last year. I didn't have to, so I'll have to do that. But um, yeah, obviously it's great to have a little bit more depth, but I've all, I'm also such a big believer when you're holding the standard, um, you know, to be able to say the bench is your biggest motivator. You know, if you want to find your way into that rotation, there's certain standards you need to meet. And we just didn't have that luxury last year. So it's a really great to have that kind of opportunity to be very clear on what the standards are and what it takes to be out on the floor and to be a part of that rotation. Um, you know, in the midst of it last year, it was just, it was one of the, it was probably the hardest coaching year I've had, um, both in the emotional side of all that the young women were going through, but also just the tactical side. We, we played a lot of three on three. Most days we didn't have five on five to go against. And so it was really difficult and probably the loss um, to Texas in the second round of the NCAA tournament was in the moment one of my most painful losses of my career, if I'm being honest. But as I've had time to reflect and to look back, um, it may be one of my proudest, uh, you know, moments to watch that team choose joy 
intentionally grow despite their circumstances. And so as I look back on last year, there's going to be a lot of lessons that we were sort of forced to learn that I'm going to hold tight to my heart and it hopefully will inform me as a leader moving forward. And Charisma, what was it like playing through a season like that? What did you learn about yourself and how does that kind of compare to the roster that you have this year? Yeah, it was definitely very different last year, not having as many players. But like Coach Corey said, we spent a lot of time together. So that was really fun. And I learned that I'm a huge quality time person. So it was really good for me to just spend time with my teammates and get, get closer to them. Um, but definitely a great experience. It was challenging at times. But I think we had a lot of fun at the end of the day. David Yapko, it's from the next. Hey, Coach. Hi, good to um, see you. Good to see you. Um, you know, could you just speak a little bit about the, um, the versatility that having both uh, Charisma and Gina in the backcourt brings? You know, either one of them can bring the ball up court, either one can play off ball. You know, just what, what kind of dynamic do you have there in the backcourt with them? Well, don't tell them, but no. Um, but I think I, I, I really honestly think I have one of the best backcourts in the country. And um, their ability to play off of each other, to uh, stretch defenses from the three-point line, get to the cup, but maybe more importantly, set other people up. Um, I don't think there's anyone, I don't think I recruited Gina as hard as Charisma recruited Gina. Uh, you know, I think that uh, Charisma really wanted that partner in the backcourt so that Charisma could be a little bit more freed up to um, be the scorer that she is and to maybe think more tactically and less globally in running the team. And Gina is just naturally more of a quarterback, verbal uh, leader um, out on the floor, though I, I have been impressed, Charisma, with how much you have been talking and practice and things. So, but on Honestly, they, they really do complement each other so well. Uh, they're, they're really good with the ball in their hands, but I've really enjoyed watching them grow without the ball in their hands, how they set and use screens well, how they understand angles, uh, both defensively and offensively. So uh, I feel very, very lucky for these two to be leading our team from the backcourt. Charisma, speaking to that recruiting, well, uh, over here, on your uh, oh, sorry. left. Sorry. Um, Duke to win with the LA Times. What was your recruiting pitch to Gina, Charisma? Um, <laughs> obviously, I really wanted Please a come. point guard. <laughs> yeah, literally. Um, but she really was just asking about UCLA and why I chose UCLA. And she's told me a bunch of times relationships is very important to her. And I think our coaches and the rest of the staff really invest, invest in us as people. And relationships are very important to me. So I really just kind of told her about that. And obviously, she said the culture that they that we have here at UCLA that was something that she wanted and that's something that we have here so and charisma you're an upperclassman now <laughs> you've grown yeah. up quite a lot so what's it like being on this team now so many new pieces you kind of being that one experienced the longest tenured most experienced player and for coach what's it like watching charisma grow into this role yeah it's definitely different being an upperclassman and then we have so many new players on top of that but honestly I think this is just helpful for me and my leadership and trying to grow as a leader um, and just leading my team and showing them the ropes and using my experience um, and just trying to lead my team and get us to where we want to be. It's really neat you know um, Charisma was uh, were housemates with uh, Michaela last year and to I think she got a real first-hand look at what does it mean to set the tone uh, both with your words, but maybe more importantly with your actions. And I think what's been really neat is as Michaela has moved on to watch Charisma take those lessons that she saw modeled for her in the day to day and now really put them into practice. One of the things I would not have guessed is how um, she's been really, we've challenged her to be more confrontational with her peers, to really toe the line. And it has been really fun. I, I almost had to like, sh you know, shake my head. We were doing a one on one, very competitive drill, and Charisma just stopped it and said, you know, this is not the standard. Coaches shouldn't have to motivate us. We should want this more than they do. And she just sort of set the standard for us. And I, I sort of just tried not to smile and just was like, Charisma's on her way. Hey, Charisma, I like that. I like what your coach is saying about you. you I have to be honest, you're one of my favorite to watch in the conference. Thank you. Yeah. So you're obviously a good recruiter too. too. So yeah. tell, tell me a little bit about your teammate, Gina, and uh, what you like about her game and why is she a great teammate for you and a compliment? Yeah. First, I'm excited that she's a point guard. <laughs> she's run the team. 
Um, but honestly, it's so fun playing with her. Um, she has lots of energy on and off the court and just is someone I can rely on always to talk, communicate, um, do what Coach Corey's asking of us and give energy and effort. Um, but yeah, she's just a great teammate in general. And like we talk all the time, like we can't wait to play with each other and we're just going to kill it. So I'm excited to play with you. And Thank Gina, uh, what do you expect? I mean, you got a great teammate. I mean, charisma is the real deal, yeah, as you know. And obviously for your coach to bring you as a grad transfer here, that says something about you. Like, what are, what are your expectations for you personally and for your team this year? Yeah, so my expectations um, for us as a team is honestly for me just to set my teammates up for success um, and playing with someone like Charisma, just a great basketball player, a great IQ, a great leader, um, and just a competitor. And I think with everybody amongst my team, we're all just competitive um, teammates. We want to play for each other and do whatever it is um, through adversity and just play tough together. So that's what I'm most excited for. And, and last question, uh, Corey, you were fortunate. You won a gold medal again for USA Basketball. How does that experience and like what do you bring back to your team in coaching or what 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 do you bring back to benefit your program at UCLA? Well, they, they tease me that they hate it when I come back, but they said I'm even more anal than normal about attention to detail. Um, but, you know, one thing I learned for my very first time going to a, a USA basketball event. Uh, it was a U23 team. It was five years ago. And they were doing a presentation about to the players trying out about what does it mean to put on that USA basketball jersey. And she never once, Carol Callan, who um, just recently retired, but never once mentioned gold medals. But what she always talked about was gold medal habits. And I think that that's been one of the biggest takeaways for me is that you can't just hope for a championship or becoming a champion. You got to commit to championship habits and a championship process. And your eyes have to be totally present focused on what does a championship rep look like. And that then championships take care of themselves. But I think that standard of consistent excellence and habits in everything you do is something that I've really gained from my time with USA Basketball. Hi, um, Michelle Smith, Pac12.com. Corey, as an extension of that question, you've had a very busy off season yes. with WBCA, personal loss, the USA basketball yeah. trip. How is all of that going to inform your perspective as you head into this season? Well, I think that, you know, there's just so many things. I think there's, you know, there's the pandemic, obviously the loss of my father, the opportunity to represent my country, all of these things. And I think that what it's really done is just given me uh, a heart of gratitude, like I get to do this. I have a, uh, as stealing from uh, Ernie Johnson, I, I have an I get to job. And not an I have to job, but I have an I get to job. And I'm just so fortunate. And I think that all of those experiences, it just makes me, I think, just have a little bit deeper perspective, a little bit more gratitude, and, uh, and just really more of a valuing of people. Uh, I think that it's very apparent to me that, that life is fleeting, and it's really hard, and only what we share with each other. Uh, the opportunity I have to watch them grow, to help them become who they want to become, and to impact the world in the way that they want to impact the world, that is such a privilege. And I think this last year has just made that go a little dip, bit, bit deeper about how fortunate I am to be a part of that process. Cindy Brunson, Pac-12 Network's play-by-play -play voice. Charisma is open for three. <laughs> Sorry, I've been dying. She's to not say open that. very often. I know. Cindy. I've been dying to say that. Uh, no, seriously, Corey, you have your full slate of players minus Emily Brossard. Sorry to hear about that ACL injury, but you do have your players from down under on the roster. What kind of difference is that going to make for you this season? Well, I think you know uh, more than anything. I just think the loyalty and the perseverance that uh, Izzy Anste showed throughout that entire. Uh, you know, pandemic fiasco with getting her visa and being able to come over here has just been huge. From a tactical perspective, it just makes such a difference to have rim protectors. Uh, she's a legit 6'4 that has great experience, a high basketball IQ. We have depth in the forward spot. Uh, you know, you know, I'll tell you who's been a huge surprise that we've been playing uh, at the four a lot is Kayla Owens. And she's just been, uh, she was our leading rebounder and scorer in our first scrimmage. Uh, she's added a tremendous amount of depth to that position. And of course, losing Emily, that's really imperative. But uh, Izzy's just been a great addition to our program as well as Imar 
Mari Thomas, a Bay Area a kid coming back to California. Uh, obviously, she's been going to be a huge piece in terms of how she can score the basketball, um, but in that forward spot as well. So having depth is a great thing, obviously. But, um, you know, I think really just the in terms of just the Aussies uh, and specifically Izzy, uh, you know, I don't take for granted how much perseverance that took. I mean, she was not only not able to come here, everything was shut down in Australia. So she really wasn't able to play the game she loves for almost 18 months. And so just having her be able to get her love of the game back, she's had to sort of um, work her way back into being who she is and who she will be for us. But um, really, really thankful for that addition. Yeah, hey, hey uh, Ben Parker, CardinalSportsReport.com. You know, I saw you guys have UConn on the schedule. Um, just talk about how excited you guys are for that game. And, and just like, you know, giving yourselves a, such a challenging game in the non-conference, how you feel that's going to prep you for Pac-12 play and, and beyond. Well, you know what's great to be able to say is that, you know, UConn, obviously, I have tremendous respect for them. They have obviously set the, the standard for women's basketball and the amount of championships. But – how great is it that we're actually saying, well, I got to play teams like that because I got to get ready for the real basketball in the Pac-12, you know, right? So having um, the two finalists be from our conference in last year's, uh, obviously, NCAA tournament and eventual national champions in Stanford, I think that's awesome. And uh, we have tremendous respect for UConn. I think they'll be, obviously, a top, you know, three team in the country going into that this year and having a chance to give us a barometer of where are we. But make no mistake about it, the Pac-12 is our focus. And we know that if we're able to survive and thrive in the Pac-12 grind, that the NCAA tournament will be, uh, I'm not going to say a walk in the park, but a whole lot easier. So, And I just think the preparation with playing a team like UConn that early in the year uh, is a tremendous thing. And, and I think that it's going to be a really fun game. It's on ABC. It's going to be a national audience. I think it's just a great opportunity for us to not only showcase UCLA women's basketball, but Pac-12 women's basketball as a whole. Corey, you mentioned Izzy unable to do much in Australia. Owens and Jefferson opted out last year during the COVID year. How much were they able to do with or without the team since then? Well, I think it depended on where they were from, you know. So Kayla is from Texas, so she was able to do a lot more than uh, Kiara Jefferson, for instance, was being from Sacramento. So a lot of that depended upon the county in which they were from. And, uh, you know, uh, Bryn was the other one in Canada. And so, um, you know, really probably Kayla was, it's no coincidence, Kayla was able to do the most, and she's probably had the easiest transition back in. Um, so it really varied from person to person. And then at Charisma, watching you your freshman year, before your freshman year, asking Japrice Dean, do you want to shoot? Can we shoot? Can we shoot? <laughs> then the next year with Michaela Onyemwede, working with her. I'm wondering now that you're a junior in a position of leadership, who else do you see has that kind of drive and that kind of thirst for partnership and mentorship within the team? Um, in my opinion, I would probably say Dominique. Mm -hmm. um, she's always in the gym, just a gym rat. And last week I asked to shoot with one of my other teammates, Angela, and Dom saw that we were shooting early before practice when she came in the gym. And then the next day she was like, hey, can I shoot with you in the morning? But I think she's really just looking to get in the gym and continue to work on her game and do it any way possible. I would also just add to that that um, that's been one of the things that's been really fun for me to watch grow is that I would say she could name several people now. People want to be in the gym. They want to be in mastering their craft. And it's not one or two people. It's 8, 9, 10, 11 people, which is really fun to see that change. Gina, coming from a, a great conference and going now to a great conference, what are you learning about the Pac-12? What were you excited or, or maybe anticipating to learn about the, the Pac-12, and now that you're in it, what do you got? <laughs> yeah, so coming from four years of undergrad, playing in the ACC, which also is a um, highly competitive conference, but coming to the Pac-12, you know, seeing two teams play and compete in the national championship game um, just speaks volumes to how great this conference is. So I'm really excited just to, you know, go to the different teams and on the West Coast. I've never been out in the West Coast or played in these arenas. So I'm really excited just for that experience, um, the venues and the cities around it, um, just with my teammates and just excited to represent UCLA. All right, I hate to cut this short, um, but we are out of time. Gina, Charisma, Corey, thank you so much. Oh. Um, and USC will be in shortly.
Thank you all so much. We appreciate you, and our conference would not make the ascension it has made without your coverage. So thank you so much for investing in us. Thank you, guys. Thank you.